What's up, Street Talks here, coming from the Eric Street blog. So, I want to give you a quick tutorial on how to master using Lightroom. So, first and foremost, the thing to know about Lightroom is you only need to know how to use 10% of it for 90% of the functions. And essentially, this is just what I do in Lightroom, and feel free to pick and choose what works well for your workflow. So, generally, what I do is you know, I plug in my SD card, click import in the bottom left corner. And currently, I don't have it set up correctly. So what you could even do is, let's say you already have your files you know, somewhere on your computer. So I got my digital files in the DCIM folder in my downloads folder. You could just left click this and drag this down to Lightroom Classic CC and click include subfolders. And by default, you want to make sure under file handling, this is set to don't import suspension duplicates because you don't want duplicates in your files and this is actually the important thing is under this little thing here it says apply during import make sure to check this little box here and under develop settings click none and then you want to apply presets while you import your photos so the reason why this is good is it helps speed up your workflow so I currently have a lot of free presets just Google Airkim presets or just check them out um, I currently have the Airkim chroma version 27 and this is all I do. So I just click import. And what you want to also make sure is, you know, by default, this is actually copy. And to know where your photos are being put, by default, they're just being put in your My Pictures folder. And they're just according to the date. So I just click import. And generally, when I'm importing my photos into Lightroom, one thing that, uh, so I'll, I'll just give you several different tips. So one practical tip is actually don't look at your photos from left to right from the beginning to the end you could actually look at your photos all the way from the back and then go from the back to forwards and one of the benefits of looking at your photos backwards to forwards is actually because generally whenever i'm photographing a scene i, I usually photograph the scene multiple times and while i'm working the scene i discover the best composition while i'm shooting so if you look at your photos in backwards chronological order, so uh, you know most recent to backwards, the benefit is you're more likely to see your best photographs. And the way to navigate Lightroom is usually, uh, so I'm using a laptop, I'm using a MacBook Pro, and I'll usually use the, the trackpad to just kind of scroll up and down. And some hotkeys to know, which are very useful, is if you want to collapse the sidebars, you could either click these little arrows here which is time consuming if you want to speed up your workflow hold shift and press tab and then you'll automatically open and close all the tabs like such and some hotkeys to know is you could either double click an image to look at the image or if you want to go back to the gallery view press G for gallery if you want to simply enlarge a photo the hotkey to enlarge is E press G to go back to gallery view and you, if you want to see something full screen, you just press F. And if you want to develop a photograph, the hotkey is D to develop a photograph. And then you have all these modules here on the right side. And also a good tip to know is when you're developing photos, generally what's the most important stuff is on the top. And as you start to scroll down to see all this other stuff, this stuff becomes less important. So once again, press G to go back to the gallery view. And so there's different ways you could look through your photographs. Uh, one tip is the small thumbnail test. So, especially if you have like a thousand photographs to look through and you don't have that much time, you could actually judge your compositions based on seeing your photos as small thumbnails. So for example, look at these series of photos that I shot of this diagonal looking thing. And I don't even remember what I photographed, but you could even see from the small thumbnail, here you have the top half, which is a top third, which is white, and you got a little bit of white here. This composition is good. All these compositions are pretty good. And then here you have the diagonal disrupting the whole pattern. So instead of just looking at these all individually by left clicking and pressing E and looking at these one by one, what I could do instead to save time is once again, press G to go back to the gallery view. I could just hover this one image, press P, and the hotkey for P is pick, which means that you're essentially putting a little flag by the, the image, and you can look at the, the photos later. Or another example is take a look at all these photos that I shot of this 
this oil puddle and it was, it, was, it was very colorful and without actually looking at these full screen you could kind of see what the colors look like so here on the left side you got mostly purple you got a little bit of uh, yellow here here in this picture you got a little bit of purple yellow and blue here and if you could just uh, choose whatever photos you want based on the th small thumbnail you can save you a lot of time so here oh this looks kind of nice i just press p and how do you know whether you want to p a photo or not essentially just follow your gut if you like it it's a good photograph that's all you have to know even here these little compositions of this tree that i photographed so here i just press shift and i'm pressing the arrow keys you could see if this is the frame I like, kind of like that curve here, whereas here there's a little bit too much negative space on top. So I can just hover on that P. And once again, you could just kind of scroll through your images quickly. And this is a much more effective way of choosing your images. So here I got like the American flag that looks kind of cool, P. And the reason why the small thumbnail test is a good one is that if you think the photo is interesting as a small thumbnail, it'll probably be interesting as a big image. So, you know, even here, I photographed a series of images of this Dodge Charger car that I liked and I was actually really drawn to the eyes. So here you could just kind of look through the images and just kind of ask yourself which version of this looks the best to me. And so to me perhaps this one looks the best, I just press P and you could also see that within the sequence of images that I've shot of the headlights of this car. It's actually the last image which is the most interesting to me. So once again, you're kind of scrolling and these are all mostly like urban landscapes that I shot here in the suburbs of LA. And realize that as a photographer and a street photographer, don't just restrain yourself to photographing you know, just strangers on the streets. Just look for nice colors. Like you could even see this nice abstract of this you know, car that I found or even photographing these little flowers you see on the side of the street, press G. And I think the secret of being a happier photographer and being more fulfilled in your photography life is to essentially don't put any limits on anything and everything is give yourself unlimited freedom to photograph anything you find interesting. Even one tip, one thing I've been doing recently is being in the passenger seat and letting my friends drive me around and me essentially taking photos outside of the, the window so I can make impossible photos like these like the overpasses of these LA freeways in the passenger side window whereas this is a little bit more dangerous obviously if you're driving press G to go back to the gallery or even photographing these huge trucks and to me it's just kind of nice I like the red against the blue skies and generally if you say you like a photograph that you want you really like and you want to develop more just press the hotkey D to develop generally I'd recommend sticking with presets um, I have a bunch of free presets that you could just use and all these little things on the right side just kind of play with these drag them a little bit to the left and right and the thing with processing your photos and aesthetics is all according to your own personal taste and just as a practical tip is once you have a photo that looks like 80 percent good enough to you just press g to go back to the gallery and then my suggestion would just to be exported and the way to export it is press shift and tab to collapse all the sidebars click export and figure out what kind of folder you want to use so generally I sync these all to my Dropbox and under my Dropbox I go under my pictures folder and usually according to the date so 2018 so I have LA version 1 LA version 2 I'll click new folder LA v3 I'll click create and usually I do this instead of using the subfolder function because I sometimes lose track of what I'm doing I just click choose so make sure subfolder is unchecked and you can just title this whatever you want and generally what I like to use is custom name original file number so I could file the, find the file in uh, the finder by just searching the number if I need to down the line. So this should be like red truck and blue sky. <laughs> it could be super simple and then if you want to be more nerdy about it you could put your name and photography and uh, location like LA and then even put in the date. And one tip is when you're doing the quality, this only needs to be 80%. That's about optimized for the best image quality for the smallest size. Just click sharpen for screen, this is fine. And this is actually one thing I like to do is under this post-processing tab, after export, by default it's do nothing. But I like this show in Finder afterwards. So if I just click export, 
because I often get a little bit absent-minded when I'm processing my photos, then it'll automatically show me the folder, the photo where I've exported. And just press the space bar to look at the photo nice and big. And let's assume that you, you look through a bunch of these photos. So I press shift tab again. And generally I like to use this little format here to look through my photographs. So let's say I like this photo, I press P, I go back to G. Sometimes I'll double click an image to look at it more full screen. Sometimes when I'm not, I'll just keep it smaller. So let's say I like this photo. I could just choose it based on the small uh, thumbnail. I could just press P. And so let's say I look through a bunch of these pictures and I pressed P on a bunch of them. And then what you just do afterwards is press shift tab again in the bottom right corner where it says filter, filters off, click this click flagged and now it'll only show you these photos which you've looked you've chosen so you could either press e to enlarge and look through these one by one and generally i like to use the e view the enlarge view because you could actually just load the images quicker or you could just press f to look at these full screen and i would recommend the more you use hotkeys the more you can speed up your workflow and also even if you want to quickly process the photos let's say you could just press e and under here, this quick develop tab, I would just recommend clicking these little arrows here on the right side. So you see the double arrows is increase exposure a lot, decrease it a lot, or increase it a little bit, increase it a little bit. And once again, this is just another simple way for you to speed up your workflow. So let's say I'm just looking through these photos one by one. And I could just adjust exposure a little bit. That looks good. Let's say I exposure, exposure here a little bit. That's too much. Minus. That looks good. That looks good. Lower the exposure to make it more red. Oh, I like that. This is a photo of my mom coming from the airport. Plus, plus, plus. Let's say, okay, that's fine. Click, click, going right. I want to increase the exposure here. Minus, minus, minus. Uh, let's say I don't like the image. Then you just press U to unpick it. And then once again, press G to look at all these images. And let's say I like all these photos and I want to export them. Press Command A to select all the images. And then just click Export. And then once again, we have our LA version 3 version um, as a way to keep track. And then we can just title this custom text uh, Los Angeles suburbs, Eric Kim photography, space 2018. Scroll down, everything's okay, and click export. And once your photos are exported, then other practical things you could do is you could upload these straight to your Facebook, upload them to your website. In terms of my personal workflow, under my Safari, I'll have a new bookmark, like new post. And one thing I've been doing, which is actually really fun, is creating more of these diaries. And I think in Instagram and Facebook, there's too much emphasis on the single image. Now I'm in more interested in storytelling. So what I'll just do is do these little photo diaries. And so let's say I'll title this LA Diary. I forget what version I'm on. So I'll press plus and I have a, a link to my blog, which is ericinphotography.com slash blog because I publish a lot. So sometimes I just forget what version I'm on. So I'm just kind of scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. And I think the last version I worked on was LA version, was LA version one or LA version two? And this V concept is a good way for me to just kind of keep updated. Yeah, so here I already had LA V1. So I'll just create LA diary V2 to keep it consistent. And to import the photos or to upload the photos, I just go into Finder. And you can see I have all these images here are the ones I exported. Then the easy way to do this is just press Command A to select all. It's another hotkey that's useful. Then I hold the left key uh, on the, the left click on the trackpad. And then I could actually do is drag all of these friends here and then release. And you can see each of these photos are uploading one by one. So uploading, 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 uploading. And then once these are all done uploading, I'll just click insert into post and I'll just hit publish. And also make sure to choose a featured image, 
so let's say this is the featured image I can click select featured image and then once again click add media and then just wait for these things they're all already pre-checked and once they're done uploading just click insert into post and then once I click publish they should show up to the home page of my blog and so if you never created a blog by yourself uh, check out my entrepreneurship course it's probably the best way to find it is just go to ericinfotography.com slash blog slash udemy because I'm hosting the course on Udemy. Just kind of scroll down and then just click this Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Photography Entrepreneurship link or just click shop and we have a link directly on that Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Photography Entrepreneurship online course. Click this link here and to enroll in the course. And it's going to teach you how to create your own YouTube channel, create your own blog. It's super dope. It's super exciting. And obviously, if you want to learn more about Lightroom, go back to my shop, click Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Mastering Photography Online Course. Click this here, and then you can learn more about using Lightroom. And yeah, so hopefully these tips on Lightroom will be useful to you. Also, if you want to learn more on essentially Lightroom tips, just search Eric Kim light room visualization pdf and my sister annette made a really great visualization on all these different lightroom classic cc presets the hotkeys if you just want to download the pdf click this here and then you can see there's all these really cool and dope presets and instructions on the full steps on how you could import your photos and of course if you want to google air kim presets lightroom classic cc that's the newest version just google that click the first link and then you could find a direct link to the new presets which are under a new xmp format which i suppose is new for lightroom classic cc and also there's a link to the older versions of lightroom which you could access as well and all the presets are open source and free so meaning you could download them apply them to your own photos and if you want to you could remix them you could share them and the reason i kept them open is in order for you to make photos that you like so it's a nice beautiful day so remember Rather than spending time just stuck behind your computer looking at photos, I think it's always more important to go out and make new photos. So remember, always be bold, have fun, keep your workflow in Lightroom simple, and the more you could shoot, the better it is. Yeah, so here it is. Google Air Kim Classic Preset CC. You could click the first link here, and then, it'll, and then click the downloads, click the little finder button here. You can see the fi files are here, double click that, and you can see all these epic presets you could apply. Or if you want the older ones, you could check out the older Lightroom versions. So presets 2017, click this here, click this little finder here, double click this here, and you can see it's this old .lr template format which works for older version Lightroom. All right, thanks a lot for watching guys, peace out.